Welcome back to Free Media. I'm Amber Duke. And I'm Robbie Suave. Well, Kamala Harris's running mate, Tim Walls, has been dubbed by the mainstream media America's dad. He stopped by The Daily Show with Jon Stewart. Walls defended the Harris-Walls ticket's decision to join forces with none other than George W. Bush Vice President Dick Cheney and his daughter, Liz Cheney, a former Republican congresswoman from Wyoming. Jon Stewart, who is a longtime Cheney critic, for good reason, pressed Walls on the move. Let's watch. The Cheney thing. <laughs> do, do we really have to do that? There is still a core group of folks out there. You know, your point being, and not joke, the, the, the don't tread on me, the Reagan piece of this, the, the libertarian piece, uh, but the constitutional piece. Yes. There are a lot of people out there. I think, I think Liz Cheney and Dick Cheney give permission to those folks who want to find a reason to do the right thing. So he referenced libertarians there. We're right now making a video program for a libertarian magazine. I'm a libertarian, a lot of libertarians watching right now. I don't think any of them, a single one of them, would put the Cheneys in the same, in the libertarian category. I certainly wouldn't, in fact, me and many of my coworkers here at Reason have relentlessly criticized the Cheneys for years for the reasons that Jon Stewart was pointing out, that Dick Cheney was an architect of a disastrous foreign intervention that got tons of people killed and destabilized the Middle East and led to all sorts of civil liberties and free speech violations at home. Liz Cheney, his daughter, is an ardent crusader for that cause as well. It goes to show you that the neoconservative project was completely and easily absorbed by the Democratic Party when Trump came along. And you know, that's not to say I don't think some of her criticisms of Trump have validity. I, she is most mad at Trump for the actions surrounding January 6th, which I also think are bad. But fundamentally, the problem is that he articulated a different foreign policy conception than the neoconservative one. They want, they want war with Russia. <laughs> they want war with Russia, and they don't think they're going to get it from Trump. They might, now, they might get it from Trump because he has a chaotic foreign policy, but you get continuity with Biden-Harris, which is interventionism. Yeah, and I think it's an important reminder that uh, neoconservatism was not relegated to the Republican Party, um, especially in the modern era. There was a significant overlap between the establishment wings of the Democrats and the Republicans that agreed with interventionist foreign policy. Um, I mean, Joe Biden uh, was actually one of the only Democrats that expressed opposition to the Iraq war at the time, and he was the only one who was actually right about that. Yeah. He uh, pushed back against quite a bit of Obama's foreign policy. Um, as VP and was sort of ridiculed for it. Um, that those are about the only things that I would agree with Joe Biden on um, that he's done as uh, someone in elected office. Um, but pretty much everybody else was just along for the ride from the Democratic Party. Um, and so I think that's why it was so easy for them to accept that the Cheneys were now going to be helping them campaign against Trump. And Liz Cheney herself has proven to be someone who is just as manipulative and shape-shifting as Kamala in comments on the trail this past week, suggested that she did not support the Dobbs decision because she doesn't like what some states have done in the aftermath of that decision being overturned. And this is someone who was a strident pro-lifer yeah. until like two years ago. Yeah, I think it goes to show what, what's important to her, which is the foreign policy stuff, which was always the case with the neocons. That's why they were somewhat distrusted by the other legs of the, you know, conservatism being described as a three-legged stool between social conservatives, neoconservatives, and market economic conservatives or libertarian type people. And uh, the, the neocons were always viewed with some distrust, and they're the ones who have um, merged with the Democratic Party with the greatest level of ease. I'm always interested when anyone tries to make an overture to libertarian voters because it doesn't happen very often and often betrays a fundamental lack of just basic definitions of what libertarians believe in. Donald Trump did go to the Libertarian Party National Convention. He was booed. It was a rare environment where he does a, an appearance where he is in an environment where he actually even could be booed. Um, you know, we're a, we're a cranky bunch of, uh, of, of voters out there. I think Tim Walls himself is about the most opposite thing you could have from someone prepared to make an appeal to libertarians because he's very left on economic issues. He has an additional role as, as having presided over a state during COVID under just fundamentally unlibertarian or anti-libertarian policies. For like the Democrats to make an appeal to libertarians, it's not like Tim Walls is in, Liz Cheney's you'd want, you'd want some, is there some pro-civil liberties that like, I don't know, Jared Polis had somewhat more moderate COVID views and every now and then says something just kind of normie about wokeness being too out of control. Mm -hmm. 
Maybe something like that. The Liz Cheney's and Tim Waltz's are not selling it. No, and you forgot your favorite libertarian uh, pet project, yes. which is explaining to people why they're wrong about fire at a crowded theater. Yes, Because exactly. Tim Walls brought that up on the debate stage with J.D. Vance and has also previously said that he believes hate speech and misinformation are not subject to the protections of the First Amendment. So it, it, you're exactly right. Yeah. He is very antithetical to libertarianism. Um, not that I am one, but I like to think I understand it better than those people. I on think screen. you could pass the Turing test where you uh, pretend to be a yeah. fool, a robot, into thinking you're actually a libertarian. <laughs> I, I don't think Tim Walls could pass that no. test. More free media right after this.